In Psalm 103 from verse 1. Bless the Lord. Oh, can we read it? Can we read it? Everybody, let's read. One to go. One to go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Verse 2, let's sing it. Do what? How many have had benefits this morning? How many have had benefit this month? You saw benefit of allowances, benefit of the life, benefit. How many people did they ask, had extra to their allowances this month? No, I'm saying on the river, you, your money, maybe it was 20,000 they were sending to you in January, but February they added a little to it. Is there anybody like that? They added to your money. Your parent consciously added some more money for you this February. Let me see your hand. Are you sure? So you are blessed. Come on, say, I'm blessed. So that's not it. Number three. Can we read number three? One to go. Stop it, stop it. Who forgive it? Now, how many people sinned this month? You did something wrong that God should be angry about. How many people did not do anything at all that God should not be angry about? You didn't do anything. You don't have any sin. You don't have anything to ask for God's forgiveness for. Thank you for being sincere. So did God forgive you? If God was to knock your head, in fact, some of the things that you people do sometimes here, you know I told you, I have already given advanced forgiveness. I've told myself I must never be angry in Covenant University, so I just relax. So I chose to relax. It's not that I want to relax. I chose to relax. Can you tell your neighbor, Chaplin chose to relax. <laughs> uh, you know, because the way some of you act sometimes, you should be knocked. They should just give you boom. And if I knock you, guy, you will spin. You know, my military hands sometimes, if I knock somebody here, you will spin. If you see me flog somebody, if I flog you, the soldier kind of flogging, you can't miss it. Wear padded trousers. I will hit you in some corners of your backside. That, uh, <laughs> how many of you have, have met teachers that even if you are on punishment and you wear plenty, this thing, they know where to target you. They will target you here. Where the trouser will not reach. <laughs> How many were badly flogged in their secondary school for bad behavior? <laughs> you see now? Uh, flog! Uh, but you know what? Now, you see where? Praise the Lord. Now, now, can somebody be thankful to God? Just, Father, thank you. I did too many bad things, but yet you forgive me. Talk it or say it. Lord, I did many bad things this month. I browsed pornography. I stole somebody's money. And they didn't catch me. I did all manner of wrong things. Are you still thanking God? Just be thanking him. I'm saying what I know. If you don't thank him, he said he forgiveth all thy iniquities. And many have plenty iniquities. Hello? God forgave you for those iniquities. Are you not thankful to him? But he also said, continuing in that scripture, not only forgetting for all your iniquities, who healed all thy diseases. Oh, can somebody give a hand clap to Jesus right now? <laughs> How many felt headache, pain, all manner of things, and now it is gone? You didn't take any drug. You didn't take anything. All the pain, the ache, and everything, everything just disappeared. It's not because of anything. It's because of God's love over you. Not because you are strong, because it's God's love. There are many people in the hospital. I did some programs this month. I won't want to scare anybody. I won't want to say anything about it. But every time I, I thank God, thank God for your life. Thank God for the grace. Thank God for the help of God in you. Thank God for healing all. There is no small sickness. Oh. Somebody will just say, oh, my head, my head is paining me. And something else happens. 
just quietly, some of you say just like that. Yes, it's just like that. But I pray and thank God that all of you, God kept you. Wave your hand to Jesus and say, Father, I thank you one more time. Not only that, let's go on. Who remitted, redeemed their life from where? Ah! How many escaped accident? Either hostel accident, class accident, whatever, um, TMC accident, football accident. They would have the kind of way the guy kicked your leg, that your leg should have been broken by now. But they will call it taku. From taku, it can completely ruin your life. Just one small taku in football. One small tackle. Some people, they have tackled them like that, and their uh, kneecap shifted. And that was all. He couldn't play football all his life again. Please, can you raise your hand and say, Father, thank you. Why am I recounting of this thing? To know why you should thank God. The reason why some people are happy or not happy is because of the number of, or the cash that is inside their account. That is what determines their own qualification for thanking God. The moment they have plenty of money, the more money is not there, mm. or maybe somebody has not. You so you just look at so many things, ephemeral things, and that's why no, be thankful unto God. Come and say, Father, I thank you. Amen. Quite important. So He redeemed your life from destruction. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? The steadfast love of the Lord never see. He said, his mercies never come to an end, oh God. And they are new every morning, always. Father, great is thy faithfulness, oh God, Jesus. And lastly, he said, Who satisfied their mouth with good things? How many ate chicken this month? No, let me see your hand. You didn't eat chicken at all, no problem. How many ate chicken in the cafeteria this month? Okay, okay, if you didn't eat chicken. How many drank Biggie this month? How many drank Coke this month? How many did not drink Coke at all? Okay, how many drank water this month? <laughs> okay, you didn't know. Somebody didn't eat chicken or he didn't take Biggie or he didn't take Fanta, but at least maybe to, to manage your economy. That's why he didn't take cook. But at least, no matter how you manage your economy, can you stay without water? Okay, so did you get water? Did you drink water? So come on, lift up your voice and say, Father, thank you for satisfying my mouth with good things. You know, somebody can say, excuse me, chaplain, you are talking about good things. That's not water. Let me give you an, a story. In the, during the Liberian War, there was a family who didn't have anything to eat. The war was on. Nigeria will not see war. Yeah. None of us will ever experience war. Yeah. Did I hear believing amen there? Yeah. If you go to Rwanda, Liberia, uh, Sudan, and Ethiopia, and quite a number of these countries that have experienced war, what has happened to them? Now look at this family. They sat down one morning and there was nothing like food to eat in the house. So what did they do? Everybody sat down the table and what they thank God for that morning, they put water inside the plate and everybody sat down on that table. Father, we thank you for the gift of life, for the benefit you have given unto us. Thank you and thank you. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is that somebody may not consider water as a good thing. That I drank water, well, I didn't drink juice, I didn't drink Coke, I didn't drink water, I didn't eat meat. In my school days, when you tell uh, people to serve you, you tell them, Madam, rice without. The Madam understands that. Come on, tell somebody, rice without. That means meat and all other things is out of it. Just eat. <laughs> oh, no, it's 
not a strange life. So what happened to that family? They did all. They ate and they were just thanking God. Thanking God for the water that they had to take that morning. And when they give thanks to God, remember, whatever you give thanks to God for, God multiplies. Suddenly, some army bandits came to their house. Boom, boom, boom. Open that door. Open that door. Everybody was afraid. Hey, we have entered trouble today. They all were under the table. They said, come out here. And they brought them. They brought tin tomato, granite oil, rice, and said, oh yeah, get to the kitchen. Every one of you, cook for us now. Cook for us now. We want everybody in this family. So everybody started running about. Okay, okay, we have heard you. We have heard you. With guns, they were telling them, oh yeah, Oh yeah, remove, open the rice now. Open this, open this one. They brought chicken, brought rice, brought everything, and they were hope only. Then suddenly, as they were waiting, waiting and to get them to begin to cook, suddenly they had gunshot again. They now told them, okay, you people, finish this food and make sure we are coming back to come and eat here. They run, ran out of the house. They never came back. <laughs> That family fed fat on everything. Do you know what? All throughout the crisis, they were in the house. Rice, tomato, granite, chicken. When others were suffering, they were enjoying. Now I listen to me. For thanking God for the water you drank this month, God will put great things in your mouth this month. Did I hear believing amen there? One more time, somebody should thank God. If you didn't thank God for the water before, thank God for it now. Father, <laughs> you know, you didn't thank God for the water you were drinking before. He said, you relieve them, with them. He said, satisfy my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like that of the ego. Now, but that is not where I want to go this morning. I still have a few things I want to say. Is this. If you must bless the Lord, my soul, and all that is within you, bless the name of the Lord. There is something you must carry that brings about your ability to bless God. That is what is called the spirit of joy. The spirit of joy. Come on, tell somebody the spirit of joy. <laughs> the spirit of joy. It is a spirit. That's why many don't know, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. Depression is a spirit. They call it the spirit of heaviness. Anytime you are feeling depressed, dejected, know that a spiritual force is coming over you. You will also notice that every child of God who is fervently walking in the plan and the purposes of God, don't find the spirit of heaviness over them. They are quickly unable to dissipate the spirit of heaviness. Somebody said, oh, I don't know what's happening to me, but this one, that one. No. In Isaiah chapter 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can you hear? Not the spirit of the devil. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the, preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives can you have amen and to open the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort them all that mourn and to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for money, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Come and say, Lord, every spirit of heaviness over my life, let it be destroyed right now. You know, this was the import for me telling some individuals who don't want to be here this morning to go. If you want to carry the spirit of heaviness over to you, but if you want to exchange that spirit of heaviness for the spirit of joy, this is the opportunity to do it this morning. The Holy Spirit is the fountain of joy and gladness. 
Have you not heard? In Psalm 45 and in verse 6 to 7, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. Your royal power is expressed in justice. Your love, what is right, you love what is right and hate what is wrong. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you. It is impossible to rejoice always and evermore without the spirit of joy at work in you. Somebody will ask, what always keeps Chaplin excited? Or some people who are always excited, no moody conditions, no things around you. I heard God's servant sent to somebody yesterday. Don't think people don't have challenges. But do you know what? They are smarter than their challenges. Those who carry challenges all around their life. Oh, my dad is like this. Oh, my mom is like this. Oh, my... If I tell you some of the things I've gone through all to this time, you will not, uh, you, just, you just, you know. Some of you just see that we have kept, if God's servant tells you certain things, but we have become smarter than those challenges, smarter than them. Knowing that we must never allow those things to get to us. Many of you allow too many things to get to you. Oh, my father is sick, huh? You keep on, uh, my brother is sick, huh? Oh, I don't have money enough, huh? Oh, they didn't pay my school fees, huh? You just allow so many things. So be smarter. Let me tell somebody, be smarter than the challenges of life. Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let me tell somebody, rejoice. rejoice. Tell somebody, rejoice. rejoice. Tell somebody else, rejoice. rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I say again, rejoice. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Rejoice evermore. Evermore. Rejoice evermore. Come and say, I will rejoice evermore. Rejoice. If conquest is your desire in life, don't forget this, the fourth part of engaging the power of the Holy Spirit for conquest, you must be a man who bless the Lord. And you can't bless the Lord without the spirit of joy. Joy, joy, joy. There's a little song, old song. I have a joy, the joy of salvation. The joy of deliverance, I have a joy. The joy of salvation, the joy of deliverance. Joy every day, come on. Joy, joy, joy every day, oh yeah. Joy, joy, joy every day, oh. Joy, joy, joy every day. The joy of salvation joy every day don't mind me with my old school but i tell you there's joy in my spirit i have the joy the joy of salvation the joy of deliverance i have a joy the joy of salvation the joy of deliverance joy every day never having a dull moment because the spirit of joy is available there. I pray that today, this Thanksgiving service, everyone here will contact the spirit of joy. Amen. Never to have a dull moment in your life anymore. Amen. How the spirit of joy empowers for conquest, as I conclude. How does that be? The sight of the storm may cause your faith to fail without inner strength. I don't know what storm that is around someone here. <laughs> you know Peter in Matthew chapter 14 and in verse 28 to 30. Oh, <laughs> when Peter began to sink, his faith was failing him. But God, Jesus, held him through. I pray that no one's faith will sink here. Did I hear an amen there? He said in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches in glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. Come on, say to be strengthened. Come on, say it, I will be strengthened. So how does that strength come? That strength comes by the spirit of joy. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Some people lose loved ones and they begin to fight God they lose loved ones and they begin to fight God there are individuals who are here possibly no father possibly no mother possibly both parents are even gone to be with the Lord but they have maintained their joy 
not asking God question. Have you not heard? The songwriter said, Unquestionable you are the Lord. Oh yes, unquestionable you are the Lord. Oh yes, unquestionable, unquestionable, unquestionable you are the Lord. So why are you asking too much questions? Unquestionable you are the Lord. I pray today, everyone, under the sound of my voice, whatever question you have for Jesus, those questions, God, we raise them in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord builds strength in your inner man. That's why Nehemiah 8.10 said, The joy of the Lord is my strength. The spirit of joy enhances our access to the voice of God that empowers us to conquer in our battle. Every time your spirit man is rumpled, you cannot hear from God. Remember, David had an encounter. Certain things happened to him in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Everything was taken away. But David, because he never allowed his joy to be taken, he was able to inquire of the Lord. Shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? God said, oh, don't worry. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. That is 1 Samuel chapter 30, and in verse 6 to 9, and from verse 17 to 20. So, I pray that today, someone is recovering in the mighty name of Jesus. Did I hear? Believe in amen there. The spirit of joy delivers us from murmuring, which only complicates our matter. Every murmurer, God always destroy. First Corinthians 10 10 say, Neither murmur ye as some of them murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. Let me tell your neighbor, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. This was the import of why I told some people to go out of this service this morning. You may not murmur to me, but God can see the murmur in your heart. When you murmur, you only see destroyers. But no one will see destroyers here. Did I hear believing amen? And lastly, it takes the joy of the Lord to carry divine presence, which is our guarantee for conquest in life. What do, do I mean? He said in Psalm 16 and in verse 11, Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence. There is what? And at your right hand, there are what? From today, you will never see any pressure in your life. It will be pleasure all the way. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. That's why I want to say, please, if you can't be joyful in the house of God, where else would you be joyful? Young men and women. I marvel at all of you sometimes, or some of you, not all of you. While some are full of life, full of excitement, serving the Lord with excitement, some are just feeling that this whole essence of coming to church is a burden. Oh girl, oh boy, listen to me. Very shortly in your life, you will search for this God so much. Some of you are young ladies here now, no problem. Some marry and they are looking for children. Okay, somebody looking for, uh, for a child. Would you go to church and be sleeping? No. Everything seems not to matter now. But soon they will come, they will matter. Somebody who doesn't have a job after graduating for five years. Would he go to church and be sleeping? No. He's waiting for one word. He's waiting for what God will tell him. Too many things are done for you now. That's why you feel so like a desica in God's presence. Somebody is not filled with the spirit of joy, cannot thank God for what God is doing in his life. Feel that this whole essence of worshiping is a burden. Oh, thank God I pastored around Uniben before I came here. That's those ones, they don't tell them to come to church. They rush to church. They trek to church. When they don't see boss, they walk distances to make sure I must go and worship the Lord. Why? Because they know the essence of that worship. But I know everybody is becoming wiser today. And the good hand of the Lord shall be upon you. Finally, I read this scripture, Psalm 112. And what did it say? Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted 
greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endured forever. Unto the upright there arise a light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trust in the Lord. His heart is established. He is not, he shall not be afraid until he sees his desires upon the wicked. He has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. May the good hand of the Lord rest upon you today. Will you just raise your hand wherever you are in this service and say, Lord, I thank you. Say one more time, Lord, I thank you. Say one more time, Lord, I thank you. Amen and amen. Rise up on your feet and shout a believing amen. amen.